This video is for my HO scale modelers. I'm sorry I forgot about you when I put my channel on YouTube and I uploaded videos it was HO scale model railroading and that's where I got most of my subscribers at first and I have neglected you when I got heavily involved with beekeeping and I started putting beekeeping videos on and I was recently asked do I still run trains on my layout and yes I still run trains on my layout but not as much as I used to and I do a little bit on my layout as far as adding stuff and changing like last winter I did these trestles and I stuck in screens here for when I do the plaster and now I'm currently working on this concrete embankment and I'm trying to decide do I like it like this or do I like it like this and I think I like it like this so I will be uh, cutting pieces of wood and gluing them in and then I already have the paint here's the paint this is new concrete this is aged concrete so I can mix the two if I want to make it in between but anyway my first videos on YouTube like the ones that got a lot of views was the no helix climb and somebody asked me because he saw that video and he wanted to know if I was still running trains and, and yes, I'm still running trains, but not as much as I used to. So let me uh, let me pause this, and I will turn on the layout. You hear that, Husky? That's my Sasha girl. Okay. This turns on the layout, and I have, oh man, 150 locos on the layout. And every once in a while, you get a surge through the decoders, and it'll burn out a decoder on a loco. So I'm, I'm always afraid to turn on the system. And some when they burn the decoder, you'll hear a loco in full speed. That means the decoder's burned out, and you've you've got to replace the decoder. So this is a very expensive hobby. And I want to say this is my world down here. When I come down here and play trains, I can't hear the rest of the world. I can't can't see the rest of the world. But I do realize the rest of the world. Is still going on in it. It is all screwed up. If you have honeybees, you will realize how screwed the world is because your honeybees are constantly dying. So here, here's all my custom locos. If you want to see my videos about HO scale custom locos, just enter HO scale custom locos. A third of the locos on the layout are HO scale custom locos. And down here, my son doesn't come here very often. He's a millennial. Um, there's something wrong with kids these days. I did a lot for him when he was growing up. And then I expected him to take over and do stuff for himself. But for some reason, they get spoiled. And when you try to cut them off, they want to act the way they do. So he hasn't been here in two years. His locals sit here, and I don't care. It's his loss. This is a fun layout. And let me explain to you, I added the Montana Rail Link branch line a few years ago. And it starts over here, and I haven't done much with scenery, because everything got expensive over the last few years, especially during COVID. People were sitting at home doing stuff for their hobbies, and it got too expensive to buy anything. You used to be able to buy a loco for 50 bucks on eBay. And now you're lucky if you can get one for a hundred. This one right here was over a hundred, and I'm working on this, but it's taking me a while. And this one here, I got lucky, and I got this one for under fifty. So here's two locos that I'm working on, but because I'm busy with other stuff, I'm, I haven't finished it. So anyway, that Montana rail link comes around, goes around the basement, and it ends up over. Over here where it ties into the BNSF. And I have a train there right now. Let me pause this camera. Okay. My layout is basically a rail yard with short distances in between rail yards. So I don't spend a lot of tra time running trains around and around and around in, in circles. I will run a train from one place to another 
and the amount of time I have, and then I shut the system off, and that's where it stays. So this train right here came from up there to Montana Rail, Link, Rail Yard, and it's come down, and it's going to tie in to the BNSF Rail Yard. And this branch line I have is steep, and it has a tight radius curve, so... I don't bring up big trains and even going downhill you have to watch it this video is gonna to be too long if I uh, if I show everything but anyway they wait for permission to come into the yard and this is this is the way I do my turnouts very cheap. A paper clip, you bend it, screw it to the layout. Every once in a while, you gotta go back through and tighten down that screw. But that's very cheap. As long as I can reach it, I don't need any mechanical devices. So this local here is coming into the yard. And I'm going to turn off the ditch lights and dim the headlight. And then I'm gonna grab my cab here and go down to the other end. Check my turnouts. So they will come into the yard here. They will drop off what they need to drop off. And they will pick up what they need to pick up. But I have some locals sitting here. Those were helpers. So let me pause this. Okay, I moved those helpers. And those helpers will end up going back down to the lower level this is my helper track and what I do is when I do big trains I will put them in the center and I currently have two trains down here a coal train and an intermodal train right there and sometimes I need helpers for them so got that out of the way let me uh let me get this Montana Relic train in Everybody has limited time. You don't have time to spend watching my long videos, so I'm trying to make it as quick as I can. Just like I don't have time to be watching all these stupid long videos on YouTube. But I just wanted to inform my HO scale modelers, yes, I still run trains occasionally. And do I run tra long trains? Not as much as I used to. Because it this is not as easy as it looks. You have to... I have different decoders and locos. And some of them run a little faster than others. It's kind of a pain in the ass to make them all run exactly the same. And model trains aren't like real trains. They're not as, as heavy. And they won't stay on the track. If you don't have the right loco in the middle of your train... When you're going uphill, you're going to end up pushing your cars off the track rather than getting uphill like you want. So I would uh, bring this train in, do any switching that I need to do with freight cars, and then I could back up. And this right here is another... This is a branch line for Montana Rail Lake. And this is limited on height. You can't bring down auto carriers or double stack containers. And that's a short... It's not really a branch line. It's just an interconnecting line. It's short and it goes down to my lower yard. And then I can do the same thing down at my lower yard. And I will do that here. Hold on. I'm going to pause this. Okay. I just dropped off. A string of cars here and I still have I don't have anything to pick up but I have the back part of my train that I can need to continue taking to a different location and let me tell you something real quick about these these are uh, proto SD9s and this right here has a custom cab of course the nose is chopped down and this one right here has the original cab 
and the nose is chopped down. So 608 and 651. So we're going to continue on. And now we'll end up over here. And this is a Montana Rail Link engine staging yard. If I needed to switch out locos or I needed to add one or take one away, I could do it here. And my dog is tearing up the wall. Oh, shit. Let me... Uh... I need to put her out side not out completely got dirty wheels or dirty track <clears throat> so anyway I'm over here now let me pause this again okay I made the decision I don't need to change any locos we can continue we turn on the ditch lights and here we go I'm going to end up over here. Uh, I had, let's see, mice get on my layout and for some reason they like sawdust and then they get into my hoppers and get the sawdust all over. So I'm gonna be pausing this, but what I'm gonna do is this train here will end up down here and I'm gonna pick up those cars, get them off the main line. Okay, I've come down here and I'm going to check the turnouts. Of course, they're not right. You always check your turnouts. I'm going to hook onto that freight. I'm going to pause. Okay. I'm down on the main line. And over there are the hopper cars with wood chips. So I'm going to, as soon as they get lined up with that track, I'm going to stop. Do my turnouts and back up. And pause again while I'm hooking up to that to shorten the video. Okay, I'm coming down to my lower yard and I gotta turn off the ditch lights because I don't wanna blame the, the other railroad employees. Got dirty track there and haven't cleaned track in a while. And dirty wheels on the loco. This is embarrassing. That's why you normally want to run two locos. And they're gonna go around here, check those turnouts over there, make sure I don't run into my yard. And I will show you where I end up. Okay, we're at the end of the rail yard. And depending on how much space I have in the rail yard, I have an opening there. I will be putting this, this freight into this yard. And these locos can go back around over to the engine facility. So I've got over 14 minutes in this video and for me to do this actually on a layout, I'm talking 20 minutes. So to spend an hour on the layout, it's pretty rare for me to do that with all the other things I have to do, especially with a construction project that I've got going on, my honeybees and having to walk my dogs and take care of other things, my electrical business. So. Yes, I do run trains. Uh, don't run long trains too often. Don't run small trains too often. But I just ran a train for you, showing you that I can go from my branch line down to one rail yard to another. Okay, and we're here at the end of the yard, and I can 
See, that's a custom, custom freight car right there. If I were rich, I would still do honeybees, and that would limit the time I could spend on trains, but I would still find some t time to spend on trains. I'd do honeybees and trains, and I would have money to spend on my trains. <clears throat> Wouldn't do electrical work anymore, because I'm getting tired of dealing with people. See, there's something going on with these two locos. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it. These locos, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull them off, and I'm gonna look at them later. The bottom of the wheels, you know, look at their bottoms, to see how clean they are. I go through the basement quite a bit with other things going, going from my cellar to upstairs, and the tracks in a lot of dust. So that's basically that's basically it. All right, thank you.